a maven, an expert, an authority, a connoisseur, a specialist, a professional, a knowledge king, a rock and roll sports talker. Coons Ford of Security Boulevard is proud to present The Sports Maven with Bruce Posner, a no-holds-barred look at the sports world. Now, here's Bruce Posner, The Sports Maven. Well, we have to stretch the sports world today out of uh, the misery of the Baltimore Orioles. We'll talk about that later on, but not for long. It's not much to say. 24 and 63. It's almost impossible. It's almost like unbelievable that game after game after game, they lose. You know, and and uh, I believe, like uh, I think it was written by Peter Schmuck this week in The Sun, that each day that passes for the Orioles... I think Machado's value drops, all right, because now you're talking about a shorter rental. We're only got, what, about 75 or 80 games left in the season. And, uh, you know, where does it end? I don't know where it ends, but uh, where are the offers? Nobody, uh, apparently, we can't even get any kind of top pitching prospect or any top prospect at all. And uh, the team is just floating in air right now. And the uh, Colby Rasmus debacle. That is, guy quit the team. Sorry to see him go, huh? Yeah, he quit the team. He walked away from what a million dollars. He said, "That's enough." Can it be that bad? I I, I really don't get it. But uh, Rasmus has a checkered reputation, and he's gone now. He won't be back. He actually got a break probably by him leaving because he wasn't adding much and. But you never hear of a guy walking away. Two straight years now, too, because he did the same thing to the Rays last year. Yeah, well, there's obviously a problem. But the big news today happens in less than one hour. I am stoked for it. I am, as if you listen to the show, you know that I'm a huge Tottenham fan. And no, I'm not an expert on soccer, but. Danny, I think well, you'd agree. I'm kind of getting there. I think you've you've almost lapped me, Bruce. I mean, I, I've been a casual fan for most of my life, thanks to my father. But, I mean, I'm, I'm getting my soccer news from you these days. Well, let me tell you a little story. You haven't watched a soccer game until you've watched England play, and you're watching it with two of the most pessimistic British fans. <laughs> but they're all like that. Yeah, of course. Right? I mean, I watched the game the other day with my son-in-law and his dad, and we just had a blast and but the whole game, oh, we can't win this. One nothing's not going to hold. It's tied now. We're done. And I said, well, you know, it's one to one. It's the game's not over. You know, it's one to one. And then we then they go into penalty kicks. For we can't win in penalty kicks. We can't win. Well, they wanted penalty kicks with one of the most to me. Somewhat, and I read this in all the English papers. So, but I, it's I felt it just watching the game. Eric Da taking that final shot. Dyer, what, yeah, Dyer, whatever his name is, and Lingard. Not were you surprised by that? I was, especially how uh, I mean, I was following along that game on Twitter, and 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 Dyer was getting uh, torched the entire game, and the fact that. <laughs> I mean, you can't second guess them, but it's it's why there's so much doom and gloom and just if that feeling of impending just failure on the side of, of England, because it seems like they have to even fall into success sometimes. Well, here's the thing, all right? I think it's been a big, big series for England. And losing that game on purpose to Belgium, maybe, I really don't know, but it sure seemed like it kind of worked in their favor. Belgium has this confidence that they're the best team. And, of course, they didn't play anybody either against England. But uh, I think that this run by England is going to do wonders for the squad in the future and also especially for Tottenham. Yeah. I think that the emergence of Trier as an international star all right, on that squad and even Deer or whatever Dyer, his name, right? Dyer, Deer, Dyer, you know, all these guys, all these Tottenham guys, of course, Harry Kane stands alone, six goals. I wouldn't say he's locked for the uh, golden boot, but I'm not sure who's out there who could get past them. I think he's the best striker left. I think, I think. I mean, it's, it's him or Lukaku, and I would take Kane. So. Well, how about that Mbombe? Mbombe. Yeah, yeah, Mbappe is very good. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's, there's a 
uh, an argument to be had, but I think you and I have established that the official stance of this show is that Harry Kane is the best striker in the world. We, so. Well, it's the only way I do the show, if you, <laughs> you acknowledge that. Right? Uh, but it's amazing how that team is uh, engulfed by Tottenham, Man U, and Man City. And uh, Lingard is Man U. I believe so, yeah. He's unbelievable. And this guy Sterling hasn't got started yet from Man City. I mean, he really hasn't done that much. But the goalie from Everton, all right? See, I know my, I know my yeah. stuff now. The goalie from Everton has done well. You're ready for the EPL season. Who in the world is from Chelsea on the team? On that team, there none. are a couple guys. There, there, there's a couple guys deep on the bench. There's a uh, Ruben Loftus Cheek. He's a, <laughs> he's he a, got it, women. Don't lip. He had a very good game. I know he's, he's against been, was it Tunisia? Yeah, he's he's big off the bench, especially. Uh, he has been a guy. The reason why I'm chuckling is that he's been a guy who's been in the Chelsea system for years and years and years, and can't seem to break that team. And that's a theme. I mean, not not to you know divulge too much as a Chelsea fan, but there's a lot of these club teams, and that's the difference between club uh, soccer and international soccer that. That these players have gone from spot to spot, and they've developed allegiances with fans a- along the way. And like uh, on on Belgium, they have Kevin De Bruyne and, uh, and Romelu Lukaku, and and Thibaut Courtois, and Aiden Hazard, and all these players who who people have gotten to see on a, on a weekly basis in the EPL. And a lot of those guys played for Chelsea or still do play for Chelsea for me. And that's why since the beginning of the tournament, I've been rooting for Belgium. And, uh, and I think that we, uh, we were speaking before the, the, uh, the show started. I think that Belgium and France look to be the top two teams left and they uh, square off next. So, Well, unfortunately for the tournament, they play each other. And I agree with you. What do you feel about that? How do you feel about all European teams being left? Do you think that's good or bad for the tournament? Uh, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, Brazil lost. I mean, it was no uh, Uruguay, Uruguay lost. You know, where was Suarez yesterday? Yes. Where was he? Yeah. That's, I mean, he, he, he's he been dealing with an injury ailment, but you would think that he'd be out there for that big. I mean, he's been miraculous yeah. beforehand, you know, and Messi lost and, you know, uh, Ronaldo lost. And you got four European. I'm sure Europe loves it. All right. Yeah, that's There's, true. No doubt about that. But anyway, uh it's going to be great today. Listen, five to two favorite. That's a big favorite. Heads up. England is over Sweden. And Sweden's beat everybody. Though. Sweden's on a great run. But um, we'll see. We've got less than an hour for that game. And all I say to you for everybody say, what is he talking about soccer for? Watch this game. Just all I'm saying. And then watch the next game, Russia and Croatia. And in, in Russia. And Russia certainly has an advantage, but certainly... The beautiful thing is, right now, England's favored to go to the final game. Absolutely. All right. Should they? And all right, they play Belgium. Well, I'll admit, Belgium's better. I mean, Belgium's stronger from what they've seen. They've beaten better teams. They've done it. Uh, they're just a better team. It helps that they're the smart bet, too. I mean, I'm, right. sure, I'm, I'm sure that that's, that's definitely uh, they swaying. They the... Japan 2 nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that, so the that point of that thing. statement was, this point of the statement is, when you get down to one game, anything, anything goes. Yeah, absolutely. anything goes. A hot goalie, a crossbar, a bad break. Harry Kane explodes. A penalty, absolutely. A penalty. These penalties on Harry Kane in the in the box. What are these guys thinking about? Well, I think it actually. Finally, the, after Tunisia, they started to call it. Well, I mean, I think it's ultimately coming down to the fact that it's all being graded on a curve. You look at Neymar who basically started getting legitimately whacked by the end of his last game, but it isn't getting calls because of how much of the theatrics that he puts on. I'm pretty sure Harry Kane is benefiting. I mean, no no striker in world soccer is exactly, you know, acting like the toughest guy in the penalty box because you want to draw that that foul. However, he is not as much of a, an a actor yeah. right, as, as Neymar, and I think that benefits him in, when it comes to the officiating in this. Well, I saw Neymar, of course, is the... Uh, the tremi- Tremendous striker. Right. Okay. And did you see the the nine rolls yes. when he got hit? All right. Well, 
This did not do well for his image. No, especially here in the in the Western Hemisphere, we do not like flopping at all. And there are a lot of people who turn off the sport because of stuff like that. When you see the biggest player in in sports act like that, I mean, it's one thing in the NBA when you see Tim Duncan or LeBron James act like they've never committed a foul in their entire careers when they're when a shooting foul is called on them. But it's another thing when there's that bad flopping and it's being called and it's actually changing the outcome of a lot of these games. Well, let me tell you something. All right, I'm watching uh, one of the one of the soccer shows and there was a coach in Sweden and they had a Neymar drill. Yeah. And did you see that? Yeah. And all the kids, kids and all the kids, all of a sudden he, he blow a whistle and say Neymar and they hit the ground and start rolling and holding their ankle. It was hysterical. It was hysterical. He's becoming the butt of a joke. We got to get to some serious news right now that doesn't make me happy. University of Maryland was subpoenaed in an FBI college basketball case. I'm just going to read the statement from the university. On March 15, 2018 and June 29, 2018, the university received grand jury subpoenas for documents relating to the ongoing federal investigation of college basketball. The university complied with subpoenas, provided responsive records. None of the records show evidence of violations of applicable laws or NC bylaws by university coaches, staff, or, or players. The university has cooperated and will continue to cooperate fully with the ongoing federal investigation. While this is in certainly great news, it's in line with, with, with what we already know. Former five-star commit Diamond Stone allegedly took around 12000 from the NBA agent before coming to Maryland. Well, I don't have much to say about this, but I bet they're not happy they ever mess with Diamond Stone, all right? Because this guy, not only did he not play well, not only did he leave early, but uh, who knows? And it goes on to say uh, a payment from a D'Souza, Silvio D'Souza. Comments about current Kansas player Silvio D'Souza, any documents including communications, the investigation will continue. As of now, Maryland has not been cited doing anything that would be against NCAA or the law. So I am fairly confident in, in Coach Turgeon not being involved in anything untoward and uh, not happy about it, though. And they're not winning on top of it. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you see that associated with winning. Uh, Diamond Stone, it paid off for him. He's the last man on the roster for the Utah Jazz uh, Summer League team. So That's not much. No. And that's, so he winds up in the D League again? Yep. I wonder why he doesn't go. I was hearing a, 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 listening to the radio on the way in, and it was an interview with Rick Barry, and he was talking about his son, Canyon. Mm-hmm. All right? He played for Florida, I think. Right. And Canyon is... Just having the worst luck in the world. No NBA team will look at him, and his numbers and his measurables are unbelievable. And Rick Barry, of course, it's his son, so you got to tame it a little right. bit. But I saw Canyon Barry play. He was impressive. I think he shoots underhanded like his dad. I, I doubt it. I doubt it, but sure that, that, that'd be a good Maybe a tribute, a tribute. A tribute, to right. But, I mean, hey, I mean, a lot of these guys who we thought, I mean, remember all the talk about Leangelo Ball? He couldn't even get a workout with the Lakers, and they told him to uh, p- uh, pound sand. You know, I mean, the it's it's very interesting how some players get a legitimate opportunity. A lot of it seems to, to be like work ethic. If you're a good influence and you seem to work hard, and you even have a chance to potentially make a roster, you may do it. I mean, well, but you apparently, know. apparently, not to interrupt you, but apparently, Canyon Barry had a shot with the uh, tryout with the Warriors, which is about the worst team in the right. world to go to for a tryout. Right, and played unbelievable. Well, and, it, and it didn't measure anywhere. But uh, speaking of the Warriors, <laughs> the rich get richer is an understatement. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, first thing I thought about was the rich get richer. So I started to write it. All right. And then I go to ESPN to see what they had to say. And it says the rich get richer. There you go. I mean, it's such the it's such it's the, the theme. statement. Yeah, absolutely. For that move. But the Marcus Cousins and, and for Jamal, Mc, Jamal McGee. You know, look at the Lakers. I mean, look, it's extremely clear that the Lakers and LeBron, LeBron did not come to L.A. to win a title right away. He has Not no, this year, no. His team has no shot. Now, it's up to the Lakers hierarchy, and Magic couldn't, you couldn't get anybody smarter or better. Right. Magic to put the team together that can win. But 
Paul George chose not to go to L.A.? Shocker. You know, I, I honestly believe that playing with uh, Westbrook is like uh, uh, a shooting forward's dream because he's always open. I mean, Westbrook's always driving. That's true. Yeah, you know, but uh, it goes both ways, though, because uh, Russell Westbrook, there's a lot of statistics out there saying that because he's so ball dominant that he makes his other teammates suffer sometimes. But obviously, they developed a very good relationship last year and they're getting the toxic mellow out of that situation. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see. It does seem very clear, though, that the Lakers are going into 2018 and 2019 knowing that this is probably almost certainly not their year. It's going to be a year to massage the cap and that roster however best they can to fit LeBron. I'm pretty sure LeBron knows that. I mean, I'm not sure if you saw this uh, story that Lee Jenkins had on on Sports Illustrated talking about the process of which uh, LeBron chose the Lakers and how he was like at a scene from Entourage was standing on the st- top step of his private jet before he was going to fly off to Europe with his wife like call the Lakers yeah. and, and I'm pretty sure in that moment he probably knew he was like you know what this is going to be a honeymoon year for me I have absolutely killed myself for the last four years trying to drag a Cleveland team to the finals he you know he played all 82 games this year four games in the finals it should have been longer if it wasn't for JR I'm not saying that LeBron deserves to have an easier year but it I think he, but it won't be it won't be he'll carry the team right, further right, right. But he's Javal, gonna, Javal McGee Lance Stevenson Two guys, all right, who have been a thorn in LeBron's side. Not that they've ever stopped them. Right. But they're a pain in his butt, the way they acted. And now they're both Lakers. Is that a coincidence? or Le- Probably not. Yeah. I, th- I think LeBron probably, ha- I mean, it's amazing because that, that's always been the uh, the narrative going on, especially during the playoffs when the Pacers and, and LeBron go up against each other and all of uh, Lance Stevenson's antics and stuff. But there has to be a certain degree there where... LeBron respects him. And the other thing about Lance, that people want to give him all this uh, for blowing in LeBron's ear and all that stuff, he had phenomenal stats against LeBron. So obviously LeBron really does have a respect for those who get the better of him. I went through, you know, you weren't here then. You probably were still in high school. I don't remember. But uh, when the University of Maryland recruited Lance Stevenson. Right. Do you remember all that? I don't. Okay. When I tell you they recruited him, they recruited him hard. I mean, they went all out trying to get him. And Lance was looking to Kentucky, and Lance was looking everywhere else, and Maryland was always his bottom guy. Well, it was Lance Stevenson and the Gravis coming back for his senior year. And Gary Williams, uh, I don't think he tried to talk Gravis into it, but he definitely wasn't going to be a first-round pick. And... For whatever reason, Gravis and Smart Moon for him decides to come back to Maryland. The next second, Lance Stevenson wants to come to Maryland. All right? Gary says what? No. Too late. But it's just amazing how everything would have changed had you could not have Lance Stevenson on a team with Vasquez. No way. Although you probably should have. Right. No. But you can't, it doesn't work like that in terms of the personality complex, especially with Lance but, I mean, that's an amazing story. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how the uh, dust continues to settle. How do you think about Dwight Howard joining the Wiz? It means nothing to me. In other words, Dwight Howard is just, I you know, Golden State didn't want him. No. Well, want well, him. But, in, but in Golden State's defense, no one else really wanted uh, DeMarcus Cousins, apparently, either. But it, it, it is amazing, though, how it seems. I mean, I wonder how John Wall feels right now, seeing that his friend DeMarcus Cousins was able to sign for the mid-level extension with the Warriors. Now, granted, he was never going to sign for the same uh, offer with the Wizards when he has those two options. But, I mean, I think that the Wizards and Ernie Grunfeld are basically between a rock and a hard place. There's and a fire Ernie Grunfeld page. All I right. mean, they're, it's they're, on the website. It's and about eight years strong, I'm pretty sure. It is just, it has gotten out of hand, and uh, the Wizards... Troy Brown, I don't know much about. I played for Oregon. Mm-hmm. I, you know, he's not. It doesn't look like he's going to be the big difference maker on the floor. It was just like everybody else drafted, and then it comes to the Wizards, and there's guys out there that would have attracted attention. They need a big guy, and then, and then to trade Marcin Gorta. Nobody loves him. Apparently, he doesn't get along with Wall, and That's that might big. have been the final straw. But to, for Austin Rivers. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Austin Rivers. I mean, who, he can who, be good. He can be good, but he couldn't even make it with his father. <laughs> In other words, his father traded him. Kind of. Kind of. That's what happened. Well, I mean, uh, he, Doc is no longer the GM of the Clippers, but it, 
it is it is kind of funny and it's it's it stinks because it does look like a lot of the east is moving upwards except for the Cavs and it, and it looks like the Wizards continue to fall backwards and remember they were an eight seed last year so all right let's get out to the first break this is Bruce Posner you're listening to Coons Ford presents a sports maven of course this segment was brought to you by Coons Ford I was out there the other day Danny I had to get something taken care of and uh, you could not negotiate the lots there were so many cars. I've never seen so many cars in my life. And trucks, trucks, F-150. I think they have every conceivable way you could buy an F-150. They must have, I, I would estimate without without being you know funny about it, 150 F-150s, maybe 200. There were so many and they were everywhere. But Coons Ford, you want a Ford, you want a great deal, great service, great body shop. Get out to Coons Ford. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to... The Sports Maven this Saturday, every Saturday for the past 10 years. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome back to Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner, Sports Maven. All right, back here on segment two, brought to you by Science and Kirk. And uh, the ever industrious Danny is going in for a couple extra hour makeup hours at Science and Kirk. Uh, that he tells me one of the best work environments there is, certainly that he's been involved with. So uh, I was happy to help facilitate that position with Danny. Remember, Science and Kirk uh, will bring back in the nest, all right? And they'll probably demand that you produce it, all right? There's no, you can't say no, can you? Absolutely not. All right. I that, love it there. That's a Thank fun, you, Bruce. That's a fun show, all right, in the nest as the Ravens come back. And I think we're looking for some good, good stuff with the Ravens. All right, got a special guest in the house right now, and that is my uh, good friend, Sergeant Patrick Parker, better known to everybody as Sergeant Pushup. Welcome in, Sarge. Dan, what? There we go. There How you doing go. this morning? I'm doing great, and uh, we're going to talk some sports, and then the entire third segment will be directed to uh, Sarge. You know, you are you you did a couple of tours, of, one tour of duty in Iraq. Yes, sir. Two brown, st- two brown stars. Yes, sir. What can I say? But thank you for your service and, you know, everything that goes along with it. Uh, so proud to have you in here today. And uh, it's funny, Danny, we were, I knew I'd start talking with him and that would be it. But uh, he's in, we're in Mission Barbecue, all right? Love that place. I Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Oh, so can't go wrong. Have you ever been there at noon? Oh my goodness! Yes, I love. You the gotta place. love that. They I play the national the anthem, and it is. Boy, I get chills, yeah, chills when I yeah. think about it. I'm sure you do yes, as well. Yes. But uh, he comes up to me. He says, "You know, I know I've seen you on TV before." So I said, "Well, I'm not on TV much, but I am on Stand Show, and I understand you're doing Stand Show." Yes. Yes. When I is am. that? It's going to be on the twenty nineteenth, nineteenth of July. Yes. That's great. That's great. You love it. All right. And we were talking about you yesterday. So uh, he starts telling me about his program and uh, I'll have to tease everybody because I want to save it for the third break. But what you do is just unbelievable. And I want you to give out when we talk about it, all the information where people can possibly contribute and uh, help you in your mission, which I think is great. I really do. I appreciate you. All right. Right this minute. What are we going to talk about, Danny? Where is... Manny Machado going, when's it going to happen? It's just getting absolutely ridiculous. All right, the days go by, the team continues to squander. And one thing you can do, all right, you can't do any worse when he leaves. It's almost impossible. This is record-setting futility. Absolutely. The all-time record for losses in a 162-game season is? 112. We're that was ha- 1988, and we're currently on pace to 117 break or something. Yep, that would be the worst. That would be just. Un- no, am, am I crazy for thinking that if they're going to have a season this bad, they might as well have the worst <laughs> season no, in franchise no, history? No, no, I, I, you don't want that moniker. All right, I mean, if they're blowing it up anyway. You don't want to be the worst bottom. soldier of the platoon, do you? No, 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 you don't want that. <laughs> Is that a good moniker? <laughs> no, 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 it's you don't want that. It's not a good mentality, that. that's for sure. No. Everybody <laughs> says, oh my God, we got to cover this. We got to watch out for this guy, right? Yes, yes, you don't want that. No. You'll get a blanket party. Right. That's <laughs> <laughs> a blanket party. That's it's like, looking like it right now. It's playing like it's a blanket party right now. Well, wow. It's uh, unbelievable. But uh, 
The Dodgers, do, who do they have to offer, Stanny? Or no, it looks like they have a couple of young pitchers to choose from. The one that everyone knows and would like to see here in Baltimore going back a year is a pitcher named Walker Bueller. He uh, was part of that combined no hitter in May that the Dodgers threw. Unfortunately, uh, it looks like he's a little bit out of their price range because, and as you said earlier, with the uh, as the days go on, it seems the value of a lot of these rental players are going down because teams know. I mean, they they learned their lesson from the oldest Chapman or Andrew Miller deals of a few years ago. If you only have a guy for four or five months, you're probably not going to get back a King's Ransom for him. So I think that it looks like they're probably not going to get the top prospect in anyone's organization for Manny Machado, which is kind of mind-blowing to think about a top five player in baseball not bringing back that sort of return. But I mean, there are a lot of reports out there saying that it's doubtful that teams will you know, acquiesce to the Orioles' demands for Manny Machado. My own personal thought on it is that if you're going to trade Manny Machado, this is why I always like the Cubs deal. Yeah. All right. Get back Addison Russell and somebody. Right. All right. At least you replace the shortstop at a much, much lower price. No, Addison Russell's not Manny, but he's certainly a, a more than a- he's average a bona fide player. major leaguer. It looks like. Yeah. So I mean, to me, that's where I would be thinking about rather than just you know what's going to happen. They're going to get second line. Prospects, right, and yep. they're not going to pan out, and it's going to look like the worst deal ever. I, I'm, I'm just really praying that that's not the case, Bruce. I, I could see a s- scenario where, while they get what looks like a haul back from a certain team, they will fail to land that. Uh, you know, you see all these, you know, Bleacher Report and Baseball America, and all these different uh, pundits out there releasing their top fifty prospects list. I'm not sure if they're going to get a guy in the top twenty five from Manny, which has obviously been the ideal return for a long time. But they might get, you know three or four prospects, one or two that, you know, top off in the top 70 or 80 in baseball. And I think that's what the Orioles are looking at right now. They're looking to flesh out this minor league system, which is, while underrated, still pretty barren. And I think that they would love to get a front of the line starting pitcher. I know that they are really fixated on the Phillies. Uh, They have a pitcher named Sixto Sanchez that's been compared a lot to Pedro Martinez. And that's a pretty good comparison to have. That's more than a pretty good comparison. uh, But everything looks very much up in the air right now. It's going to be very interesting to see how things play out after the All-Star break. Speaking of the Bleacher Report, top 16 quarterbacks. Yeah. Who didn't make it? (laughs) Is it Joe? It's Joe, all right. Did not make the top 16 quarterbacks. Well, uh, he doesn't deserve to be. He wasn't even in the top 100. Well, he doesn't deserve to be right now. And I think... Top 100 players, that is. Right. But I I still think that... And I've seen a couple pundits put their necks out there a little bit saying that for their choice for comeback player of the year or a a big performance who will have a career year that they've never had before. I mean, people are choosing Joe Flacco for that because it really is a put up or shut up year for him. And you know that as well as anyone, Bruce, that it really... I mean, you could see a scenario where if the or if the Ravens start off catastrophically, say they oh, start off one and five or something, one and five or There'd something, be no like reason that. to play him anymore because exactly. they're not going to resign him. But exactly, that won't happen. Hopefully, uh, here's an interesting stat I heard on the Golf Channel yesterday: Quicken Loans golf ratings were up ninety two percent with Tiger in the hunt, and now they're talking about a ten million dollar match play. Yeah, you heard about it. Yes, between Tiger and Phil. I'd watch TV. that. I'd pay-per-view the whole that. World, I'd pay-per-view that. The whole world would watch it. Absolutely. Right? There's no doubt. $10 million match play. It's a little Vince McMahon-esque. I mean, just, just, just do the whole like fantasy booking of just two of the biggest stars and just but make here, it work. But, but that'll be a TV they have event. To do. One thing they have to do. Winner take all. Yes. There's nothing for second place. <laughs> yeah. Because number one, they don't need the money. But nothing for second place. Tiger and Phil match play. And, you know... I'm sure Tiger will have his demands. Well, and I'm sure, and, and and Phil seems like a wagering man himself. He 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 won't go down without a fight. How Listen, great that would that be, be amazing. It'd How be amazing. great would that? You're right. It is a pay per view type event, or it's certainly uh, an event prime time. Absolutely, appointment viewing for sure. Right, it's prime time anyway. Any way you look at it. Let's get out to break number two. Come back. We're going to hear all about Sergeant Pushups Crusade and uh, the wonderful things he's done in his life. And um, it really is a pleasure and an honor to meet him the other night and for him to uh, come in today. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. This is the Sports Maven Show presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, here's the Maven himself, Bruce Posner. Yes, on push up time. Let's end hunger and bullying. All right, that's Sergeant Push Up. And, uh, well, uh, Patrick Parker, what an honor to have you here today. And, and the work that you're doing is absolutely uh, 
Fantastic. And let's start about, to give everybody your background in the military, how you got in, how you wound up in Iraq, and some of the almost miraculous things you've done. Well, I always wanted to serve my country. That was always uh, the deal. But I was going into the Air Force. I saw Top Gun. And then John J. Rambo came out. And so when John J. Rambo came out, I said, well, I'm going into the Army now. (laughs) And once I did that, I was sent over to um, Nuremberg, a base called Herzl Base. Um, Stayed there for a couple of years. I went down the 3rd ACR out of Fort Bliss, went to Iraq. So you were in the infantry? We are in the 3rd ACR, yes, in the cavalry, cavalry regiment. All right. So in, when the CAV, you have everything. You have Marines, your Arm, Army, Air Force. You got everything in the CAV. Um, so we went over there. We went to Iraq, stayed there for six months, got back, saluted, and now I'm out. All right. Well, you're being awful modest. Two bronze stars in Iraq. Yes, sir. Two bronze stars. Um, it just You learn a lot when you're there. And the one thing I learned that, man, this mash is really, it's the real deal. We got to wash our clothes with our hands over here. <laughs> I was like, man, this is the real deal. And you get a, a camaraderie. when It's nothing like when you have a group of men together and you're focused and we're going to defend this nation. And when you're 10,000 miles away and you're looking at that star, the stars in the sky, and you're like, you know, we're going to do everything we can to protect our family, protect our friends. And nobody, there's no color. Everybody is green, black, and brown in there. And we're all a family. I'll never forget that. Yeah, it sounds like it was the most meaningful moments of your yes, life. Yes, Which is great. All right, so you come back and tell everybody, you know, why you're on the show now and talk about what you do feeding the kids, all right, and uh, your, your – uh, just the way you're drumming up so much anti-bullying uh, aspects in your book. You know, here's a, promote yourself now. Here's your shot. Well, I greatly appreciate that, Bruce. The number one thing is it takes great citizens like yourself. You have a platform for me to get this information out, and you allowed me. To. And you're the reason why we sit in the desert. You're the reason why we're on the shores. You're the reason why the Navy seals out there because of the great things that you do. And we appreciate you and appreciate you for allowing me on the show. Well, you're, you've just put me in a stature I don't belong in. All right? <laughs> you put me way above the top. All right. Hey, well, let's let's truth. talk about what you do and your event on July 26. Well, on the 26, we're going to have the Sergeant Push-Up uh, uh, comic workbook signing Sergeant Push Up to the Rescue and I made this comic book because I went through bullying as a child and that's something that I don't want children to have to go through I remember um, the gentleman's name was Butchie and what a, what a perfect name for a bully and he, 3 o'clock 3 o'clock I'm going to get you and I thought about that and I said I never wanted another child to have to go through anything like that and after a while, we became friends because I let him know that you're going to have to deal with me every day because I'm not one to back down. Yeah, you're two two sizes uh, bigger than me, but I'm going to have to deal with you. And I don't want children to have to do that because as we see in society today, it's very violent. Um, kids are taking weapons to school. And what about working with one another? What about becoming friends? And what I've learned is a lot of that comes from home. But... This comic book gives the children an opportunity to talk to their parents, the parents to talk to their um, children and open up. Ask them some key questions of what's going on in their mind. Put down the cell phone for a second. Talk to your child. Tell your child what you experienced in your um, lifetime is going to school and work out it um, together. And it's a pretty good book. So the purpose so. of this book, which I gave one to my granddaughter, she wouldn't give it back to me, uh, <laughs> Is to just make kids aware yeah. of, you know, to talk about it. And you have an area in there where draw the bully or. Yes. Yeah. It's a fascinating book. It was, I'm sure you probably, it's a, it's a thin book, but I bet you spent a year working on it. Yes. Uh, yes, I have. And let's, like you said, the key is for that child to open up. And one of the sections on there is draw a picture of a bully. Well, a bully could be down the street. 
I want your child to open up to you. Is it is it the gentleman down the street? Is it the, your swim instructor? Whomever that may be, it's going to give your child to open up. What is Timmy, who's the character in the book, thinking about when he's sitting in the room? It opens your child up so you can have that conversation. What are your thoughts? What can I do to help you? And that's what we need right now. Put down the cell phones, spend a little time with there. The book is short, but it's thorough, and it'll give you the opportunity, as I said, to speak to your child and see what's going on. Sergeant Parker, let me ask you about social media today. You hear these horrendous stories about how kids gang up on a kid, not physically, all right, but mentally, and say things about them, and the word spreads how you can't stop that. It's almost impossible to stop, isn't it? Well, there's cyberbullying and and the trolling. It it's horrible. But I tell you what, I'm gonna unveil something here real soon in a couple months. And I think once people see that children have friends, then they kinda of back off of that. Um, I took lunch to children that are being bullied as well. And Chick-fil-A, I love Chick-fil-A. They supply the lunch um, most of the time. And when you go to a school and you see a child sitting by itself and 300 other children on the other side of the cafeteria, broke my heart to see that. But when you come in there with that Chick-fil-A, everybody, hey, who's that? Well, that's my buddy. That's that Sergeant Push-Up guy. And this is my friend. When kids see that, then they start changing. Oh, he has a friend. But if this child has more friends, and this is something that I'm going to start doing, for that child that's bullied, that child that everyone is ostracizing to see that, you know what, he has friends. Maybe he is cool. Let's, let me learn a little bit about him. Once that starts transforming, we get that pushed out. I think we'll see lower numbers on this cyber um, bullying and all. And that's what I'm all about. Yeah, that's... Uh it's fantastic. So the event's July 26th. At the That's your next Row. event. Yes. Foundry Row. And uh, you'll be there selling the book. Yes. All right. We're going to have a book signing. We're going to sell 630. 630 at night. 630 at That's night. That's great. All Front right. and center. Front and center without question. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll buy 10 books from you. And uh, you decide who to give them to. I greatly All appreciate right? that. You pick Thank out you. the ones who maybe don't have the money or whatever. I and greatly appreciate you, that. You, you know, I'll send you a check for that $120 because I, I think the cause, is, uh, the cause is great. Uh, now, how about adult bullying? That's just as bad, is it? Yes, it sure is. Yes, it is. It is. And um, I was amazed last summer I learned that Sinai Hospital, one of the workers was telling me that we have like a bullying um, program for us. And I was like, wow, that's that's a first. But I guess what? If you're at, hey, I got to take my son out this week. Um, it's his birthday. No, you got to work overtime. You got to do this. We got something pressing going. I guess that's what I said. Hey, that's a little bit of bullying there. It's my son or my daughter's birthday. And I have to do that extra time. And, and no, you're going to work. Like, that's a little form of bullying. So um, they have something that's, uh, that they're working with there. I haven't searched in detail, but. I was surprised to hear that they have an anti-bullying program there. You know, it's funny how, like, my mind works. And, you know, when you have grandchildren, it's it's uh, you enter a different phase of your life. And the one thing I always ask my kids about my grandchildren is, do they have friends? Do they have somebody they can sit with on the bus? You know, do they have, you it's know. Key. Yeah, and happiness has a lot to do with it. You know, and... I think having friends, it, it might rate over anything else in life, right? That just is to have friends. Me. And you know what? For those of you, you know, there's always the alpha males who always have all the friends in the world. Mm -hmm. When the alpha male befriends a kid who's, shun, you know, shunned or ignored, you know, he is going to be rewarded for the rest of his life. Absolutely. By having that kind of attitude. I know you agree with that because that's what you do. But it, I think it's important to find the alpha males and, you know, talk to them as well so they understand it. You Ex know? Exactly. I mean, what does it mean to you when you see a kid sit by himself and maybe the most popular kid in the school comes over and sits with him? 
that ends his problems right away. Right away. He doesn't have to, you know, be the guy's best friend, but just acknowledging him. You yep, know? Exactly. And exactly. If kid, more kids could get that message or parents could get that message to their kids who maybe don't have the bullying problem, mm-hmm. but they can help solve it. Right. right. That's right. a message that has to be given out. Now, tell me, you told me you do you can do 2000 push ups a day. Um, well, last summer for the Maryland Food Bank, I was doing 3000 every day from June the 19th until October the 6th. And the deal with that was. I was trying to bring awareness and trying to get people to donate to the food bank. Now, I went through a lot of Bengay and Icy Hot and BioFreeze by doing that as well. But the whole idea was to do 250,000 um, push-ups, but I wound up with 261,000 push-ups, and it fed 17,600 meals in that campaign. And um, that was the How greatest How did you get summer. this obsession of push-ups? Well, um, what happened, I was at the Chick-fil-A, and I was doing push-ups, and they heard about it, and they said, well, listen, I'll tell you what we're going to do. This Chick-fil-A in Inner Harbor. We'll give away a sandwich for every 10 push-ups you did. They didn't know what they were getting into. Oh, my goodness. I said, okay, all right. So I knocked out about 2,300 push-ups. They gave away the sandwiches. And after that, I thought, I said, you know what? Let me contact the Maryland Food Bank. Right. If I can do push-ups and I can make this effect, what if I did push-ups every day? So that's what I did. I contacted the food bank. I said, I'm going to do 250,000 push-ups 3,000 every day. I didn't know what I was signing up for. That was a lot. I was hurting last summer. But the effect that it had on people, I loved it. I absolutely love it. Okay, we're running, starting to run down on time. And uh, again, July 26th. Now, tell everybody your website where they can okay. find you. I will post this on my website. Okay. We'll try to attract as many people as there is to you. All right. Join me, SGT Pushup, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. SGT Pushup, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Sergeant Pushup, the only Sergeant Pushup in the entire world. You know what time it is. It's Sergeant Pushup time. So join me, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Also, I will come to your event. SGT push up Facebook Instagram stop I count you count we count Gmail right. thanks a lot well again thank you for your service all that you've done and you've continued it since you got out of the army which is even better all right the fact that you continue serving the country the country needs more people like you who care about this and to dedicate their lives to it so, uh, and also you'll be on stand show, uh, press box live. When will that be? That will be on July the 19th. And I'm ex- so excited about You're going to have, you listen, that's TV. You're going to have to do some push ups there. Oh, no problem. <laughs> right. No problem. But I'll I do them on make, my eyelids. I, I want you to make stand do some. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. We'll do that. You, we'll when you're do there, that. say Bruce said you're an expert on doing push ups. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, well, I'll do that. Uh, like me, you probably have trouble doing one. We're out of time, Sarge. Thank you so much for coming in. This is Bruce Posner. You've been listening to Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven this Saturday and every Saturday for the past 10 years. Go Britannia. Harry Kane, knock one in. Big day for England, heading home to watch the game. Have a great weekend, everybody. Drive safely.